Hello guys, this is Aim and welcome to the channel. This is a new video series in applicative algorithms. In this video series, we'll be building a text compression tool like WinRAR, WinZip and 7-Zip. So basically, if you follow along with me, we'll be never seeing a screen like this. Just kidding. But seriously though, we'll be devising an algorithm that can compress files up to 1 GB. We'll be also plotting them on the graph and seeing whether our algorithm is performing better for the sm smaller files or larger files. By end of every applicative algorithm series, we'll be building something substantial. Like in our last series, we have built a web-based file difference tool. If you haven't watched it, I'll link here or here. In this video series as well, we'll be using Python and some UI library to make an executable file and run it on our Windows machine. So let's get started. So what is compression? So compression is a process of reducing the total file size occupied by the file. Simple as it is. Let's take an example. One minute of HD movie can be up to 1 GB considering uncompressed. But a Blu-ray disc is 25 GB size. So what happened to so much of information? If you do the math, it should be around 180 GB, right? So that is what a image compression or text compression means. It is sometimes allowed to uh, ignore some information in order to reduce the file size. But it is not the case with text compression. In text compression, every bit is important and nothing should be lost. So, an algorithms of this category are called lossless compression algorithms. And for information, uh, image compression or uh, video compression algorithms are also known as lossy compression algorithms. So text compression algorithms have so much scope of being very effective. Why is that so? There are many reasons for it. So let's take an example. These 8 characters are all, are all we have in our file. There are only 2 unique characters here, A and B. So each character has unique code assigned to it. This is called ASCII code. For example, for A, it is given as 65 and B, it is given as 66. So, if you want to store this file in our disk, the file is always stored in bits, 1s and zero. So, we represent this A as this string of 1s and zeros and B as this string of 1s and zeros. This is nothing equivalent to 65 and 66 respectively. But, if you consider total file cells occupied by this, is nothing but 8 into 8 that is 64 bits but let's consider this if you want to compress the total file size occupied by this what would you do it comes very natural to us that forget about those 65 and 66 let's consider we are giving our own um, code for a let's say it's 0 and 1 for b so, e one bit for each character, so it is 8 bits. So, we have reduced the total file size from 64 to 8 bits. That is how even a text compression works. So, if assigning different numbers to the different characters is all a text compression does, why so many algorithms? We hadn't come to the number of algorithms till now, but it is very obvious that if there are many tools available in the market, Everyone should be having their own algorithms to make their tool effective and uh, perform better, right? So in that sense, there should be many algorithms. What makes them, them different? So let's take this example. So this car and this cat, if you assign different numbers to the different characters here, we are reduced to this number of bytes. But just see, the common pattern here is this space CA is occurring two times. What if we assign number to the whole pattern itself? So that is the second most reason why a text compression algorithm can be more effective. Because it is observed that in English language or in the case of uh, any coding language, there are specific patterns which are followed. Basically, any text compression algorithm follows three following stages. So first is going through the file and constructing a dictionary. Second is using the dictionary and reconstructing the whole file. And third is zipping 
dictionary as well as a newly constructed file together and later using the dictionary for decompressing purpose. So all the keywords like dictionary, looking up, decompress, all this will be coming later in this video and the next video following up. So the first algorithm that comes to our mind when we talk about compression is Huffman codes or Huffman algorithm. So we'll first see if Huffman uh, algorithm is enough for our tool. So how Huffman algorithm works in the first place? So Huffman algorithm works very similar to the one we have discussed earlier like numbering different uh, numbers to the different characters. So, but it based on the probability of the appearance of the character in the file. But how do we find the probability? Probability is nothing but the frequency of the occurrence of a particular character in the file. So the dictionary here will be nothing but a occurrence dictionary. So uh, let's look at an example of Huffman algorithm and see how we can store it much more effectively using some data structure. So let's get started with the example. This is our example, this cat and that cat. So there are no spaces in this but uh, so this is the whole uh, frequency dictionary we are forming. So T is occurring four times and uh, H is occurring two times. So whatever I see on screen, I have in uh, my laptop. Um, so whatever I see in this laptop will be on the screen. So let's get started with Huffman coding. So consider what Huffman coding algorithm says that consider each character as a node in the tree. And every time take two nodes which have least probability. So from our frequency dictionary, uh, we have i and s as lowest uh, dictionary because and also with the index uh, lowest index and so let's take i and s so i and s one and one we will form an internal node so we will form an internal node n1 and call its probability as 2 and we will remove i and s from the frequency dictionary and add n1 as i and s are part of n1 now and then we will recursively choose two more nodes which have least probability so let's see uh, we have uh, h and r so h has frequency 2 and r has frequency 1 so So R frequency 1 and H is frequency 2, we will form So we will form a new node N2 as frequency 3. Now uh, let's, uh, let's do the process again. Uh, let's choose two more nodes. So we will ha we have a C as uh, So let's see, we have 2 and uh, another uh, so another character we have as we have C. So we have N1 and C. So let's combine C equal to 2 and N1 to N3. And the probability will be 4. Now let's remove N1 and C from the frequency dictionary. So let's see what, what are the more uh, we are left out with. So we have T, we have... Uh, N3, N2 obviously and uh, so mm, so N3, so N4 would be let's choose A equal to 3 and uh, A equal to 3 and N equal to 3 so we have A of frequency 3 so let's add and let's add and the frequency will be 6 so let's remove n2 and a then we are left out with n3 and t so we have t equal to 4 so t is 4 and let's combine it to form any uh, internal node n5 so we will form internal node n5 so the frequency will be 8 
So we'll remove T and N3. So we are left with N5 and N6. That's it. So we will create a root node N6. And the total frequency will be 14. So this 14 is equal to the sum of all the frequency of each character in the string. So we have formed this tree. Uh, so how are we using this tree now? So each uh, side of the tree is given 0 and 1. So as standard left is given as 0 and right is given as 1. So uh, let's add zeros and 1s to all the branches. Uh, let, let me use different marker for it. So, so now it is very simple. So if you want to rewrite the whole string, so let's take from first character, how t can be represented now. So t is nothing but, let's go from the root node. So root node is n6. So from n6, we'll come to left and left again and visit t. So t now is nothing but t equal to 0, 0. So that is 2 bytes. Uh, then the next is h. So what is the most effective data structure to store this dictionary in the Huffman algorithm? So every time we are looking for the least probable character. So min heap is the best data structure for this. So you might be skeptical about this algorithm whether is it the only way we can do this or is there any other better way because it's so simple right. So Huffman the scientist after whom the algorithm is named after has proved that this is the most effective way you can code these characters in the file. But, but we can't use this in our application. Why? Because in a text file there are, might be many patterns uh, that, that uh, so there might be many patterns we can use uh, to reduce the file size even further like we have discussed earlier the algorithm we will be using for our application is lzw algorithm so each character in lzw is named after each scientist this algorithm has been backbone for any tool you take for example winzip winrar sanzip etc so in fact this algorithm did not have any replacement for about 30 years so in the next video we'll be looking at lzw algorithm how it works and more importantly code it and use it in our application so i'll see you in the next one